Hey, what's up guys? Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. All right, you guys know my channel is all about helping you guys grow a more successful lawn care landscaping business. And today we have a special treat. We're hanging out with Stan and Ed, and we have two of the most uh, hyped up lawnmowers that you guys have always wanted to see videos and reviews and comparisons on. So we're gonna do some walk arounds for you guys, show you a little bit what's going on. Stan, you've been using the right sander for the last year and a half. Yep. What's your opinion, what's your thoughts? We're gonna go through each unit. Okay, Ed's so beast. So of all the lawnmowers I ever used, this was the one that spoiled me the most. The ability for this thing to handle just about any situation kind of ruined it when I got onto the medium heavy duty lawnmowers or any other lawnmower, plain and simple, because I automatically assumed that they could all do what this lawnmower could do and nothing could be further from the truth. So then as I started to, to tackle dif difficult situations, I'm like, wait a minute, why can't, what, what? I wasn't on the right mowers, but Right. Here's the here's the caveat, and I'm I'm with Ed, who actually created and built this thing. I had two guys. One loved this, and one didn't love this. One mm -hmm. called it the golden chariot, mm -hmm. and the other guy's like, oh, I'll take the Ar Arturo Grandstones because he preferred the more nimble ability. The other guy preferred the fact that he wouldn't slide down and go into the pond at the bottom of the hill. Right, with the big wide tires. The big wide tires. No, I've never seen this on a lawnmower before. That's fascinating. I don't know if that's a marketing thing, Ed. No, we thought it was for rednecks originally, but I've come to find <laughs> that uh, it's actually pretty useful. We thought it was gonna like really mess up things or you're gonna make a zero turn or whatever, but sure. the ground pressure becomes so low that it's not that bad. You know, it's more like what you see on a golf course with these huge tires. It's, it doesn't scuff too bad. You're gonna call the Ferris, or you're gonna call the right. I've never used the Ferris, so I'm not gonna call either one. I'm just here to tell you what my experience is with the right. You've used this one. I've used you? the Ferris. Now the Ferris, this is the Z3X. You guys know, uh, if you guys have watched my channel for any length of time, know that I had a demo with these guys. And I was actually really impressed with this unit. Um, this one right here, it's got the oil guard system. So there's a lot that goes into it than other than just mowing that I feel is great for a contractor and an end user, somebody like ourselves. Now, Ed's probably got the engineering side of it, so I'll let him give his, his pros and cons of each unit because he's really smart with this stuff. For me personally, I felt it was just a comfortable ride. The cut quality was a B plus. The, the ride quality, B plus. The ability to only have to change my oil once a year, that, that's an A feature. So a lot of these little features kind of put this into that next category. The cut quality, B plus, like I said, it wasn't the best cut by any means, so that's why I want to take it through some tall grass. But again, I haven't used the right. So that's why I'm kind of curious. Maybe we should flip the script. Maybe I should use that guy and you should use the Ferris. Absolutely. Let's do that. From an engineering standpoint, tell me about the good things about the Ferris. So I would say that some of the top good things are the tires are pretty, pretty far spread apart. You're going to lose a little bit of the overlap, but the stability and the turning torque that you have is pretty good mm -hmm. and it lets you get fairly down between the wheels. That's the great thing. Now, the engine's fixed to the frame and the belt drive's not that long. So, you know, the belt's going to flex down a bit when they, when they go. And, uh, so when you raise and lower the deck, so push the button. So when you raise and lower the deck, the belt's going to angle down lower. Right? Yeah, the belt that connects to the the deck is going to deflect. Right. So the range for Bermuda to St. Augustine is not really there, mm. and part of it's because of that belt business, right? You can't go so far without the belt derailing. So that's that's an aspect to it. Like I said, layout's good. The visibility good. It's good. Control forces are light, but actually when you get near high speed. They don't actually respond and track quite as well. And the transmission in this is the Hydro Gear 4400, which is the class lower than what's in here. This is a pump and motor system, but the but the motor side of this is more like the, uh, uh, what's that, 5400. So out of the showroom, now they're, they're both gonna handle well, but when you get two, three years down the road, mm -hmm. you want that transmission not to be given up because the cost of a transmission replacement can total a machine. Gotcha. So that's one thing, you know, the oil guard's nice. I think we're gonna see that feature in more machines on the market. Um, that's is that cool. a new feature? Uh, because Briggs owning Ferris and when they went to market with this, they had some exclusivity for the first however long. Yeah. Um, so you're not you're not going to see anybody else's machine right now, but that's going to change. How long soon. has this been on the market? Because I'm a, I'm scared of a new yeah. the first season of owning yeah. anything if it hasn't been out for three or and four honestly, years. I'm a little bit afraid of putting the oil outside the engine because there's more things that could go wrong. But the feature here is phenomenal. Right, the idea that you could change oil so infrequently. So the oil yeah. change is as simple as this. Look at this, okay? That's your drain plug, yep. Take this thing off, <laughs> open this up, and it's gonna drain out, okay? You do that once a year, and then show them the filter. Turn it 90 degrees, lift it up. Just pull it straight out, it'll come. 
Yeah. Uh, there you go. So that's your oil change, right? So it's a cartridge style versus like a filter. You, right. remember, you know, like yeah, the yeah. yellow filters? Mm -hmm. And then you have your dipstick. By the way, you can pour oil right through here through that cone yep. and fill this up if it ever gets low. But this is every 500 hours mm -hmm. from what from what I understand. So yep. I feel like that is, for guys that are mowing, you know, in, in regular conditions, that's uh, once a year. That's, yep. that's, that's a huge selling point. Um, I like the controls. The controls are pretty intuitive, you know. PTO, you get your brake. Uh, the deck lever, I, I feel like it should be on the opposite side because most guys are right-handed So I want to pull up with my right hand versus my left um, But you know, that's okay, you know just about every other mower in the markets like that. Yeah, totally And the, the fuel is on the wrong side as well If I pull up to a pump, I feel it should be on the left-hand side uh, when I back it out of my trailer Gas tanks for most vehicles that seem to be on the left-hand side the same thing with having the Gas tank on the more on the left hand side. On the front suspension side of this, let's let's talk about that real quickly because there's some things that it does, but I think some things that people think it does that it doesn't do here. Okay. So Ferris, you know, brand all about the suspension, the soft ride. They've really built their brand around that, and that's great. And on the Z's, they use this where the lift arm is attached to the suspension arm, and so the machine's ride height can change without the deck gouging in or, or riding up, right? Mm -hmm. Now. That works good for suspension, but this is not a suspension system. This is simply a tilting axle. So you have this axle that tilts right here. And from my standpoint, what happens is the deck is gonna follow the rear tires anyway. See this? It's gonna follow the rear tires. Sure. And what happens here is when this wheel goes in a hole, it's gonna cause the deck to wanna scalp more and lower the front. Whereas on a fixed frame system, when you get used to it, you actually hover over the terrain how you want to cut it and you don't want your deck going to the lowest point you want your deck riding the highest point mm -hmm. and so i believe that there's some benefits to the fixed frame system over the tilting beam system this was really popular on zero turns i don't know maybe six eight years ago everybody was putting this out there and then they started disappearing again and i think it's because that people start realizing it's more to go wrong the uh you want to talk about the pad because this was one of your talking points was the um on the Ferris compared to this, you guys just have a regular flat pad here? Yeah, so the bolsters are nice when you're turning because mm -hmm. it holds you in, but when you're on a hill, you actually want to lean outside of that pad area, and mm -hmm. so the bolster kind of becomes in your way. Gotcha. And we also don't like to stitch this because that's where water and mold starts. We want it to be all sealed over, and so um, that, that's why we have the flat pad. Mm -hmm. Most of our machines actually have a dual layer in there, so there's a softer layer and a firmer layer. Sure. It's not a single piece of foam. And we saw the making the seats in here. There's got to be 100 staples in here, like you said. Versus yep. maybe just a, a yep. couple dozen. So I was able to come in and field fix this, wing nuts, pull these, pop these off, get at everything, get at my pulleys and belts, and just be able to keep going. It wasn't a matter of even pulling any tools out to do anything, any kind of repair work. Everything was always the one one of the things that I really appreciate. And I'm, I'm a guy that I, I appreciate simpler the better. Totally. Simpler the better. So in your, uh, your experience, in your testing, which one has been performing better overall? I'm biased. I'm biased? <laughs> so that's why I'm excited. Which one do you guys think? Leave me a comment down below if you haven't already watched the footage. So Ferris, right Sander ZK, let's go check it out. I think you dropped the deck to one. What do we have? About one and three quarters. Safety meeting, safety meeting. No, one of the things that I want to point out is if you look, you were just set at what? One? One. One, and you mowed at top speed? Top speed, bro. Look at that cut. Wow. Look at that flipping cut, dude. How did that feel when you were driving it? I didn't even feel any resistance. No. Out of the engine or the hydros? That's what I was saying wow. about being Boiled. Look at you That's guys. That's what I'm saying about being uh, yeah, did I do the bait switch on me? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw him over here tinkering it. Dude, I'm going to tell you wow. straight up. Look at this cut. Look at it. it. Look at it. It's flawless. High, I mean, we're talking about top speed, one inch. There's not a Flipping blade of grass left, Brian. Wow. Tell me about that cut. That, I mean, that's as real, as raw and authentic as you get on a video, right? Because yeah. I feel like I've been set up, but at the same point, look at that. I mean, that's. I'm actually really impressed. I didn't feel any resistance in the hydros. In fact, I wasn't even going fast enough. And then I looked behind me and I saw, I saw this. And I go, oh no. And then Ed's like, 
<laughs> How about that? He set me up. That's awesome. That looks good. Did, did you actually set him no. up? No. Because I had it down to take the deck covers off. So it was just rolling. It was just it was just full flow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Spoiling. Wow. It. Yes. Speed test first off, we got the right and the Ferris. We're gonna do a speed test and then we'll do a side by side test. Go in the same speed, but then see the actual cut quality. So we're gonna see how well these two cut at top end, and yep. then we're gonna see how well these two cut at top end, how you'd actually cut. Yeah, six hundred. But miles this an is hour. field grass. Good. How's the Ferris? Huh. I'm not seeing much change. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty equal. Mm -hmm. All right. You got a big mower. What do you do with the big mowers? Cut down big properties. Cut big properties, and maybe once in a while you tackle big grass. Let's go mow some tall grass. Let's go mow some tall grass. <laughs> you don't have to ask me twice. Okay guys, we got a little bit of a debate. I'm not gonna say I'm the first one that should be spouting in here, but I think this is four inches. Corey, the engineer, thinks this is four inches, and Brian, what do you think? This is four to me, so four, four and a quarter, four, five, four, seven, five. Where's five then? There's no five. Five right here. Five is all the way up. Clicked well, up. Clicked the the back. Okay, so this is, four inches this is four. Well, so if that's four. That's four, seven, five. And you let go of this, it only goes a quarter inch. Down. So that's four, seven, five. I'm with him. <laughs> okay, so are you gonna change your tune now, Brian? Why? No, I said four. Wait, what were you cutting at just now? Four. So the, I'm saying, so this is so so this is four over here. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. I'm okay, so that's four. Okay. So it takes a, a degree to figure. So it all out. that cutting we did, <laughs> all that cutting we did was off. So did you pull a Brian? I pull, I didn't pull a Brian. I just <laughs> I just hopped on a machine that was preset. But it sounds like I'm, what I'm saying is. This is not the best depth gauge. No, that's fair, that's fair. I'm gonna say that right out of the gate. This is not the best depth gauge. I want a depth gauge where you just go because the guys coming in are gonna go, hey, you, I mean, and I get the, oh, are you at three and a half this week? Are you at three and seven, five? 3.75 and it's like, you got customers that are that picky and if you got a new guy coming in, it doesn't sure. even have to be that new. You can have a person coming in and go, oh, wait a minute, I thought I was at the right depth, and then all of a sudden they're scalping everything or they're leaving it too long. You know, hey, that's not as bad as it could be. It's right. worse to scalp it than it is to burn, um, to, to leave it long. Well, we'll get some stickers in there, maybe some uh, some animal stickers, and we'll... <laughs> <laughs> Some pretty evenly cut grass, I gotta admit.
All right. What I was saying about the suspension is that, yeah, it follows the contours, but that sometimes that's not what you want. So we have a hole right here. Yeah. Brian, I'm going to ask you to start the engine and drive your front wheel over that hole with the blades on and cut, okay? We're going to leave one pass, and we're going to bring the other machine through, and it's going to cut deeper. Gotcha. All right, Bye. like I was saying, the suspension helps you follow contours, but sometimes that's a bad thing. You want to be able to hover over dips and holes. So we got a hole right here. I'm going to have you start up. Bring your front wheel right over that hole. It's going to hover over it, and the, twi the double wheels are going to straddle that hole. We're not going to scalp it. So go ahead, start the blade. All right, now we're going to take this machine. You're going to see the deck dip down into it. We're not going to hover over it again. Okay. Hover down. So we, we got a little closer through here and through here because it because it dipped and you, you almost don't want that effect. And actually, walker guys drive mowers way different than your zero turn guys because walker mowers, the front wheels follow the contours. The guys that are used to a rear weight, rear bias mower, where they just let the wheels hover over what they're trying to go over. Sure. And so that whole suspension thing, I'm saying it, it doesn't necessarily help a lot. And to me, it's just a lot of moving parts. Yeah. I, I like it for the contouring of like uh, residential subdivisions. Yeah, if it's really but, smooth and nice out. Yeah, yeah but this, this makes sense with uh, with big divots in the ground, yep. holes in the ground. The whole deck drops when it goes in. I did see it, it just dropped down and bottomed out. It is, actually. You know what I mean? This field is four four feet tall, this grass. Yeah. It's some thick stuff. It is. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like wet, lush conditions. It's like late summer, you know, we we'll got a lot it. of rain. We'll do, we'll do a second pass on this one. One. Let's just see. Uh... Handle break. Huh? Break. Oh. Break on the left.
is actually the second, that's the first cut of a second mow. So right. this pass, shot into it. we shot everything into this, and this is not dry grass. Not at all. Okay, so this is heavy, wet, three, four this, foot tall grass. I'm gonna take this guy down the same lane in the middle. This is all discharged grass. So you're gonna take it down this one? Right in the middle. All right, let's take the ferris down. Ed, check this out. See how, how caked he is? We got a 61 inch deck cut and a 72 inch deck cut. What do you think, Brian? I think the right pushes the grass out of the deck that much faster. Look at this. This is all from the Ferris and I like the Ferris, but this right here, this was all just clumped up underneath. The, the right when it came out, there was nothing left underneath it. Okay, but look at the, now you didn't bog down at all. Uh, a little coming. bit at the beginning. Okay, but you had a pretty darn good cut yeah. for what you were doing, recutting old second grass. Yeah. So, but you're also cutting less. So I'm cutting 72 at a time, handling a bigger swath. That's true. So when it's heavier grass, sure. that, that it's gonna be extra. But then dude, if you're cutting that much more grass, it's still discharged it that much faster. This is a 61. Okay. And look at, look at all this, where, where Ed is. Look, look, this is all stuff that I just was discharging after I was out of the pass for 10 feet. All right, so we've seen the Goliaths go through the tall grass. Now let's do the heavy duty mid-size mowers and see how they handle this tall stuff. But if you guys wanna see that, Come on over to my channel because Definitely. that's where we're going to be doing it. It's going to be good.